If you're in the mood to play solo on your consoles, we're here with the top 10 single player games on the Xbox One, all arranged by play scores. The play scores an average of gamer and critic ratings. Opening our list is Rise of the Tomb Raider. This is Crystal Dynamics' second entry to their Tomb Raider reboot. The game is packed with so much more tombs, as hardcore gamers Adam Beck points out. But aside from the numbers, it was the scope of the entire experience. Its areas are brimming with secrets and fresh, flexible combat that all add up to an adventure that's faithful to the Indiana Jones inspiration. For some reviewers though, like Polygon's Philip Kolar and Games Radar's Justin Toll, it didn't exactly reinvent the wheel. The changes weren't really that massive, and it followed closely in the path of its predecessor. But however, Rise's story is one thing that lets it rise up above these flaws. There is a focus on the theme of growth, and we see a more fleshed out Lara Croft. A woman with empowering new courage, who is as ready to solve puzzles as she is to exchange bullets. Rise of the Tomb Raider was a point of growth in the series, and the effects of this growth are felt on the Xbox One to this day, with a play score of an 8.78. They must be stopped. Number 9 is Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. Larian Studios' critically acclaimed sequel to their renowned RPG series was already winning on the PC. But when it made its first entrance on the consoles in this definitive form, Original Sin 2 evolved in ways we didn't even expect. On top of revamping the arena mode with new challenges and first-time playable characters, it also dived deeper into characters and storylines. And in fact, Gamespace.com appreciated that it was more than a simple port. It added a new story mode to better the experience for casual gamers, offered one of the very few split-screen multiplayers out there, and considered its layered and strategic combat one of its most compelling aspects. While there might be some frame rate drops on the console as GeoVideo and Gameblog point out, Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition is still one of the most beautiful games out there with a play score of an 8.79. At number 8 is Resident Evil 2. Just like the zombies of the franchise, Capcom revived their 1998 horror classic and gave it its much needed modern makeover. However much we've enjoyed the company of Claire and Leon in their original polygonal form, it's also a breath of fresh air to see them shiny, new, and with their own differing perspectives. For GameSpot, the second scenarios allows you to see the larger campaign story with new eyes. The impact may be subtle, but the tiny details and encounters make it all worth the second look. GameZone, however, may differ pointing out the disappointment of identical stories and inconsequential changes. However, they both went on to give the game a rating of 9. For them, the Resident Evil 2 remake doesn't just spice up the original, it takes on a life of its own, with consistent scares and smooth controls. It has a play score of an 8.79. Number 7 is Inside. Our dive into the darkness doesn't end with Capcom's remake. There's plenty more of that in Playdead's puzzle platformer about a boy navigating his own Orwellian dystopia. Released in the wake of Playdead's equally significant title Limbo, Inside seems to have inherited all of the game's darkly charming qualities, while adding even more to the mix. And out of the 40 reviews on the Xbox One, Inside received 10 perfect scores, and a whole lot more upper nines. All of them praising the game for its world building, narrative, atmosphere, and overall artistic sensibility. It's getting the lowest scores from Oz Gamers and Kanobu, who both gave the game a 7.50, and the criticisms were mostly leveled against the game's short runtime and their puzzles, which they found either too simple or too hard set for replayability. This is Playdead's second step into perfecting the haunting single player puzzler. It has a play score of an 8.84. At number 6 is Ori in the Blind Forest, Microsoft's most prized exclusives. Ori's adventures through an ethereal forest has enchanted almost everyone that guided him through all of it. The charm of Moon Studios' Metroidvania platformer comes first and foremost from its presentation, 
It shows off the beauty of their magical forest through stages that look like tapestries of a fantastical nature, filled with glowing lights and meticulously designed obstacles. But apart from the superficial, Ori's challenges are also tougher than they seem. TSA's Matt Wingle calls it a masterpiece, citing the delicate balancing act of difficult platforming and a sense of achievement that steers you to see the story through. It is a one-two punch combo of art and technical cleverness. It earns almost equal scores from both gamers and critics. With Ori and the Will of the Wisp coming to console soon, this might be the perfect time to check it out, if you haven't already. It has a play score of an 8.91. I can't keep doing this forever. I'm getting us out of here. Number 5 is Nair Automata Become As Gods Edition. When it's weird existentialism in anime aesthetics that you want, you can't go wrong with Yoko Taro's spin-off to his Dragon Guard series. This dude was already known for his calculated strangeness, and that's the direction he went for Nair Automata. He hams it up, adjusting his signature with touches of genius in narrative and gameplay. Although they never quite perfected the PC port, which kinda sucks, at least the Xbox One users got acquainted to the Android 2B in this enhanced Become As Gods edition. And as exciting as DLCs and awesome outfits are, getting to experience the story and its myriad of endings is enough for most. <laughs> is that all you've got, little android? I'll kill you! But of course, Nair doesn't claim to be perfect. There may be some debate over the game's designs. Minimalist for some, drab and barren for others. And technical issues may have been carried over too. But what remains is the mastery of Yoko Taro's storytelling that makes it rise above all that. It has a play score of an 8.96. At fourth place is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. The third installment to CD Projekt Red's has been most everywhere, topping list after list since its release on the Xbox One on 2015. To answer what makes it an awesome single-player game, it's hard to point out just one aspect of its vast, colorful, medieval magic whole. At the time of its release, the scale of Witcher 3's world was unparalleled. In their review, IGN points out that the games fetch heavy questing, but set against the backdrop of Witcher's rich and expansive universe. There's always something to fall back on, whether it's exploration or their many interesting characters. This grand scope may have led to some shortcomings in combat and leveling though, but at least for some, Game Revolution gave it a 7. There might be small glitches, bugs, and maybe annoyances. According to COG Connected, its AAA RPG storytelling is enough to outweigh all of them. And plus, with all the packed DLCs, it deserves the excellent praise with a play score of a 9.05. Third place is Forza Motorsport 7. You could say that this beloved Microsoft classic got some home turf advantage. But that wouldn't do justice to turn 10's breathtaking racing game. With every title in this franchise, they sought to create the ultimate racing experience. Forza Motorsport 7 is the closest thing they've ever gotten. Yet, it locks down the racing genre on the Xbox One, and especially the Xbox One X with its 4K support. But it's not just all about beauty though, it's also about content. Hardcore gamers Adam Beck weighs in again, talking about the variety that Motorsport 7 offers, from cars and tracks to customizations and effects. And for single players, COG Connected delivers good news, commenting on the game's career mode that feels more streamlined than ever. For hardcore fans of the series, refinements are all the game needs. And Turn 10 continues to deliver, with a play score of a 9.06. Sometimes, brothers make mistakes. At second place is Red Dead Redemption 2. Rockstar's long-awaited second entry to their Wild West RPG might be an outstanding achievement on its own. However, it still remains at number 2 on both the PlayStation 4 lists and now even on the Xbox One. Not like there's anything wrong with number 2. RDR2 has been praised left and right, especially for its enveloping open-world adventures. A video gamer gave it a 9 for its well-realized setting made alive by its wonderful scripting and stellar performances. And as far as open-world role-playing games go, RDR2 sets a whole new bar.
With such a diverse and living world, GameSpew went so far as saying it's less of a video game and more of a thing in itself that you can visit and experience on your own time. The hype and expectations were on an all-time high for this Rockstar creation, and it was all worth it in the end. It has a play score of a 9.2. And the best single player game on the Xbox One is none other than Forza Horizon 4. Was there ever any doubt? As much as Motorsport 7 delivers one of the best serious racing experiences, Forza Horizon 4 seems better, if only for that all-around experience. With its absorbing free-roaming open world of Great Britain, it's less about racing than it is about driving. If it's the best-looking game you want, Horizon 4 doesn't fall short. This might only be a few tweaks away from the beauty that was Forza Horizon 3. It still manages to one-up the previous game with more than a few interesting additions and an overhaul in graphics. But in addition to the things they've been nailing year after year, it's the freedom that this installment offers. Video Gamer says it best, there are no tests to take, no licenses to earn, you just have to drive. It's fun, straightforward, and it knows exactly what you want in a driving simulator. It has a play score of a 9.24.